Well, good morning. Welcome in and welcome to our program for today. It is Monday. It is February the 8th. It is the day after the big game. Super Bowl Sunday, yesterday, February 7th, down in Tampa, Florida. Tom Brady continuing to cement his legacy as the GOAT when it comes to uh, football, quarterbacking, postseason games, you name it. Don't bet against the guy. A uh, bit of a lopsided game. Bit of, you know, I think the uh, the Buccaneers pretty much put on a clinic in how to win a postseason uh, appearance. And a little lopsided, but uh, hey, the food was good. Totally enjoyed that. So today is week six in the eight part series on building business behind the haircutting chair, and the focus of today is super selling. Let's let's tie it into the weekend. The Super Bowl, a big event on the calendar, and we're going to talk about the notion of marketing your business around calendar-based events or any other particular spot on the calendar for that matter. But before we go there, of course, we go here. We go to $100,000 Haircutter. $100,000 Haircutter. It is February 8. Let's turn to February 8, and let's see what we've got for the day. February 8, day 39. 326 days remaining in the year. Clean the shop windows. Your front windows are a reflection of your entire business. Little little play on words there. If your windows are filthy, customers make judgments about your bathroom, your station, your bookkeeping. They decide about other elements of your business and your personality. Doesn't take much time to address this little thing, which is really a pretty big thing. If you do not wash your windows yourself, there's always a local guy with a bucket and a squeegee. Let him do it for a few well-spent dollars. Let's talk a little bit about window washing. It's such a simple thing, but it speaks volumes for your business. This is something I learned a long, long time ago. It's the little things don't mean a lot. They mean everything. My father-in-law, who was my business partner in uh, our shop, was a stickler for light bulbs. Anytime he ever goes anywhere, a restaurant, an event of some kind, he's always looking for burnt out light bulbs because to him, they're a sign of a lack of attention and a sign of a lack of care. It's a little thing sticks in his craw. We joke around about it all the time. I'll never go back to that restaurant. They had a bulb out. Well, on one level, that's kind of silly. And on another level, maybe it's not so silly. It's about that attention to detail and the focus on the little things. And the windows speak volume about your business. Such a simple way to do better every single day. And I'll te tell you the lesson I learned. I used to do my windows myself all the time. I did the windows in my shop all the time. And every week or so, two weeks, young kid with a bucket and a squeegee and a rag would offer to wash my windows. I said, nah, it's okay, thanks, I do my own windows. One day, for whatever reason, I let him do the windows. And I learned a lesson. He actually offered to trade me. He said, hey, I'll trade you. You cut my hair. I need a haircut. I'll do your windows. I said, you know what? Do my windows. I learned. Big thing that day. Put things in the hand of a professional. When he was done with my windows, I thought he stole my glass. Those windows were never that clean. Didn't even look like there was a window pane there. He got a good haircut. I got beautiful windows. We kept that tradition alive for quite a while in my shop. It was a good deal for everybody. Clean the windows. It starts right there. All right. Super selling. The Super Bowl has come and gone. Did you lever it to your advantage? You know, few of us will have the money to sign on as official sponsor of something like the Super Bowl or the Olympics. It costs tens of thousands of dollars to even get involved in a little way and millions of dollars to do anything big. And the Super Bowl and the NFL are notorious for being very protective about the phrase Super Bowl. You know you can't use it. You can call your marketing big game marketing, big day, super game. You can say a few things, but you can't say Super Bowl. Look at the ad that I ran yesterday on Instagram. I said, big game, big deal, and I offered a big coupon. But I didn't say Super Bowl. But I had a little picture of a football. But I didn't use the Super Bowl logo or trophy. But I didn't use the NFL logo. 
but I targeted my promotion to the Super Bowl. You know, the calendar is loaded with dates and opportunities to market your business. Next up, Valentine's Day. Shortly after that, St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> Not too terribly far from now. Easter's coming up. Father's Day, Mother's Day. All kinds of opportunities all over the calendar to market your business. You want to tie into these events legally, like respecting the trademarks of the Super Bowl, but using these as places on the calendar around which to focus and build business. You know, I work with a schedule, and if you read the $100,000 Haircutter book, it is loaded with ideas for tying into holidays. And what you'll notice about those ideas is I mention the holiday, not on the holiday. If you turn to February 14th, Valentine's Day, just to show you, February 14th, it talks about teaching classes within your business to build your business. It's got nothing to do with Valentine's Day. Why is that? Well, that's because we talked about Valentine's Day. Let me see if I can find it here. On January 4th. That's right. About six weeks ahead of the holiday. You need time to execute effective promotional strategy. And here's my timeline for breaking it out. You need seven weeks to effectively work a strategy tied to a calendar-based event. Six weeks out is when you do your planning. In my book, six weeks out, uh, you know, uh, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is, when is it? It's the middle of March. It's the 17th. I mentioned that the beginning of February. Six weeks out. Six weeks out is when you do your planning. You talk about what you're going to do. You get everybody involved in the discussion. You hatch your plan six weeks out. Five weeks out is when you build everything. That's when you create your flyers and your postcards and your mailers. You write out your newsletter. You order your posters. You shop for your decorations. Six weeks out, you lay out the plan. Five weeks out, you build out the components. Four weeks out is when you train the crew. Four weeks out is when you discuss the plan with everybody on your team. You make sure everybody knows what we're doing, how we're doing it, what all the moving parts are, what it's going to look like, what our expectations are. And if you did this last year, we talk about what happened last year, how successful was last year, what did we do right last year, what did we do wrong last year, how are we going to be better this year. Week number four, four weeks out, T minus four weeks, is your planning week. Three weeks is promotion time. Three weeks out from the event, it is time to start the active promotions. Mailers go out in the mail. Signs and decorations, it's time to go up. It's time to start talking up your promotion three weeks before the date. And by the way, it may not be a single day event like a Super Bowl. It might run for a couple of weeks, but we're still working in advance in this way. Two weeks out is social time. Two weeks out is when all your social media launches. Social media is crowded and it's a busy conversation. You don't want to get into the social media discussion too early because people see it and they see that's five weeks away. I don't have to think about it now. All that time and energy, paid advertising and social would be wasted before two weeks out. Two weeks out, it's time to do your advertising. One week out, it's game time. You're in it. It is time to execute. Obviously, with a thing like the Super Bowl, you don't want to just play on one day. You want to run your promotion a few days before uh, and leading up and into. Get a little more bang for your buck. Run a promotion that lasts a little bit, that has a little bit of legs. So week one, the actual week, well, now it's time to execute. You did your planning. You built your components. You trained your crew. You began your marketing, you hit your social, rubber meets the road, it's time to do. And then, of course, the week after is also a very important week. The week after is the post-mortem or the autopsy. How did it go? In the week after, talk to your customers and talk to your crew. In the week after, gather all your numbers and relative data. In the week after, assemble your packet. 
samples of all the marketing pieces that you used, all the records about any money that you spent. Maybe you've got a box for all the decorations. All the Super Bowl decorations go back in a bin labeled Super Bowl decorations and they go on a shelf in storage. So you're not spending and rebuying for this every single year. Use this week after as an opportunity to assess how did it go? Take notes on what went well. Take notes about what didn't go so well and hatch the beginnings of the plan for repeating this or anniversarying, that's the term we use, this promotion in about a year. That's the seven week strategy for marketing event-based activities within your business. If you have questions or comments or you'd like to talk about this further, reach out to me with a message. Let's get that conversation started. Let's identify either standard dates on the calendar. I rattled off a few that are coming up. And there's, of course, Memorial Day, Labor Day, 4th of July, back to school, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's. There's not, there's not enough time to do all of them. Find one good one every month and cruise those as a promotional calendar throughout the year. And every year you do it, you'll get better and better at doing it because you'll have historical data and information and the experience of having done it before. Let's get these conversations started. Let's get busy getting busier. Let's wrap up today with the technique of the week. The technique of the week is what we call ask for a pony. And asking for a pony is aiming higher than you actually hope to land and settling for what you hope to get. If you want a hamster, don't ask for a hamster, ask for a puppy. And when you get a no and they offer up a hamster, you got what you wanted. That's the basic idea. If you want a puppy, don't ask for a puppy, ask for a pony. There's no way we're getting you a pony. How about we just get a dog? Oh, we could get a dog? You win. It's just that simple. In our business, asking for a pony might be my ultimate shave combo. It's shave oil, beard oil, shave cream, and after buzz. It's the system, but it can be pricey. We're looking at 25, essentially 20, 45, 55, and two is $57. That can be a lot of money to some. It can be a bargain to some as well, but that's a big ask. You might pitch that and they say, you know what? I can't take it all today, but give me the shave cream. You still made a sale. You just wanted to sell something. Ask for a pony, aim high and be happy to settle for a little bit less. Cause sometimes, you know what happens? Sometimes when you ask for a pony, you get a pony and there's nothing wrong with having a pony. Pony's cool. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me this week as always. Of course, next week we'll have week seven in our six part series, building business behind the haircutting chair. And after that series is over, we'll start talking about more good things to help you build and grow your business in the professional beauty and barber industry. I'm Ivan Zoot. Visit me at ivanzoot.com. Like, comment, share, subscribe to the video, turn on notifications, send the link to a friend, get somebody involved in getting busy, getting busier. Thanks for letting me share with you today. We'll see you again next time. Have a great day.